There are so many pieces of the various technologies of Amazon Web Services. In this nugget, I wanted to just take a moment of Zen. Let's take a breather for a moment and let me just walk you through a sample AWS scenario and how some of these technologies might be used together. So we have developed this exciting, new, powerful web-based application. And this is gonna have global reach and we want the highest levels of availability. So one of the things that we do is we go ahead and we utilize two different regions of the Amazon Web Service global infrastructure. So we have a region in, let's say, Oregon in the United States, and then we do like Paris, for instance. Inside of these regions for deployment of our application, we know there are different availability zones. So I'll draw those in, and we are going to be making sure that we take advantage of those multiple availability zones. So we're gonna have a further level of redundancy and high availability. So let's say that we put a web server in AZ1 and in AZ2, we have an AZ1 over here and an AZ2 over here, and we have these web servers. And we're monitoring using CloudWatch the utilization of these servers, and we discover that we need even more. So we put a few more in each of these areas. And then we decide sometimes they're not all needed. So we start doing auto scaling in both of these regions and in the respective availability zones. So now there's this automatic expansion and contraction of these resources. What about storage? Well, globally, we have the ability to have these S3 storage buckets, and we can have the files that we need for the website and files that the application might need stored in the S3 bucket. By the way, something clever about S3 is that you can use it to host a static website in and of itself. You don't even need to build web servers. You could have S3 host the website. Pretty cool. But in our example, we've got web servers that we've spun up in all of those different locations. By the way, we take advantage of the elastic load balancing capabilities so that we don't have one of these servers not having any traffic compared to another server. So we can balance the load using elastic load balancing across the EC2 instances that we are utilizing. We need administrators to help us with this global application that's kicking butt. And that's why we have the identity and access management tools so that we can create user accounts for those users. That is a very strange looking user. So we can have accounts for those users that give them the permissions that they're going to need to assist us with this application. As the application gets more sophisticated, we realize that it's going to need a database layer for storing of information. We look at the different database options and we decide that the RDS, the Relational Database Service of Amazon Web Services is perfect. So we spin up in each availability zone, the RDS implementation that we are going to need for database services. The RDS implementation is so great because the backing up of data is automated for us. So the relational database service is being backed up automatically by Amazon Web Services. We can, of course, go in and do backups manually ourselves as well, but we feel protected with the relational database service and the automation that Amazon gives us. So here's a look at how these various components might work together to bring a worldwide application out there to the masses. Don't forget that Another underlying resource here that we have is our virtual private cloud technology. The availability zones in the region are going to rely on the virtual private cloud to do their work. Also, if users were to start complaining that our application access is a bit slow, one of the things that we could do is take advantage of what are called those edge locations. And with the edge locations, we can utilize something called 
CloudFront. And CloudFront will sit in the edge locations and it will do caching of frequently accessed data so our web servers aren't as busy and it can deliver the content to the users that are close to the edge location right out of that edge location and minimize the latency rather dramatically. So CloudFront, another service we may want to integrate into this example. Note that when you build an application that's going to be globally distributed, there's going to be lots of moving parts inside of Amazon Web Services that you're going to call upon. The great news is that it is a modular approach, right? Having it be modular is going to increase our availability to control things and if one component were to fail, it's not going to fail our entire design. Notice one of our virtual machines could die in this example, or the elastic load balancer could pause doing its work, and there wouldn't be a loss of access for our application as a whole. I hope you found this nugget informative, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.